This is the Eureka Mignon Libra, and I absolutely love this grinder. If you're pulling multiple shots a day consecutively or want the capability to entertain a larger crowd without going into commercial machine territory, this might be the grinder for you. Now, this grinder was sent to me by Eureka for review, but all thoughts and opinions are my own and I am not being compensated by Eureka in any way for this review. Now, jumping straight into it. This is a very classic looking Eureka Mignon grinder with a bit of a taller design compared to other models I've tried like the Silenzia, Specialita, or Oro. It came in this very nice semi-gloss white finish and they've got a classic matte black, gray, Ferrari red, and chrome options as well. This is a 55mm flatbird grinder with a touch display, a bean hopper, and grind by weight technology. The grinder itself measures just over 12cm wide, about 20cm deep, and 43mm tall with the hopper. The grinder weighs about 65 kilos, so it is relatively dense. It has classic Eureka build quality, and I say that as a good thing. All of Eureka's grinders, as simplistic as they may seem, have always had fairly solid build quality from mostly metal components to proud switches and buttons that are satisfying to use. One thing I wasn't a huge fan of, but not really a big deal, is the touch display as it seems to utilize those semi-plastic or acrylic sort of panels that cover it, making it actually feel a little bit cheap. I would have liked to see maybe glass here used, but possibly the vibrations of the grinder itself would cause a problem with using glass as a material. Overall, not a big deal. The Libra uses a classic Eureka stepless grind adjustment where you essentially just need to remember clockwise for finer, counterclockwise for coarser. I would have liked to have seen that info printed on the dial itself, maybe even if it was as simple as a little graphic in the style that the Comandante does under their hand grinders. With the 55mm flatbed grinders, you're going to get shots that are plenty juicy, drawing out nice characteristics from lighter roasts, yet retain a full body for something syrupy and rich. If you're serving up primarily lighter roast straight espresso shots, I'd probably recommend going with a larger flatbed set from one of their other models, but if you're mostly sticking to medium and darker roasts and maybe milky based drinks, this is going to be just fine. So I've been brewing up beans from Tiny Arms and even hosted a little pop-up here a few weeks ago, during which I did burn my hands by accident. Now during said pop-up, which I'll have a full video on linked in the description about how I ran it and what I'm going to do differently for future ones, I did use this grinder with its excellent grind by weight technology. Shots were consistent, doses were fast and accurate, and I have saved so much time not having to manually weigh out each shot. In total, I pulled maybe 40 to 50 shots over the course of a couple hours, and this grinder had absolutely no problem giving me the perfect 18 gram dosage every time. Now, the adjustment mechanism here does make it challenging to use with a bottomless portafilter, and while it's possible, I did find that just using a spouted portafilter worked a lot better, and probably made more sense as well in the context of a pop-up or higher volume environment anyway to avoid any mess. Coffee grounds remained relatively fluffy and consistent with minimal clumping, though as always, I do recommend still giving a little WDT before you go to TAMP. Now, I did use this grinder with a portafilter dosing funnel because it just helped contain the mess a little bit more. Without it, I found that grounds can sometimes pile up and spill over the sides of the basket, causing just a little bit of a mess. Though, if you decide not to use a funnel, you can program your single shot size to be about half the size of your double shot, dispensing, say, 9 grams, give it a little shake and tap, and then dispense another 9 grams. It's a little bit of a longer workflow, so honestly, I'd recommend just using the funnel. There was one included here with the grinder, which works just fine, but I do prefer this one I picked up from Swerk's Design, which has a really strong magnet to even better contain the grounds in the portafilter and prevent any messes. There's not a ton to dislike about this grinder. If I had to change anything, I'd recommend maybe a UV protected hopper, since my coffee bar does sit by the window all day long. Perhaps maybe a nicer material or display integration for the touch panel would also be welcomed. And maybe figuring out a mechanism to remove the hopper without a set screw, though I guess this one would apply to all their grinders, really. Maybe you still can use a set screw, just include a little um, thumb thingy thing to remove it. So to keep this review short and sweet, this is an excellent grinder that truly eliminates the need for single dosing if you're serving up a larger crowd or family frequently. While for just my girlfriend and myself, I'll probably revert back to another single dosing grinder for the home, I'm definitely keeping this one in storage for when I decide to run more future pop-ups or if I know I'll be hosting a small crowd. For 800 bucks, I think this grinder is well worth the money with the capability to serve a bigger crowd or even a low volume pop-up or commercial space. It's going to produce straight espresso shots just fine for most people and excellent syrupy shots for milky based drinks. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Be sure to leave a like. Links to this grinder will be in the description down below that provide a little kickback to continue to support the channel at no extra cost to you. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.